welcome to No Compromise, where faith and reason fuse in conversation. Hello, Johnny. Hello, oh, my love. Hello, everyone. <laughs> okay, so today's the end of our Paradise Lost series. Wow. Are you sad? Um, yes, you know I am. Mm-hmm. You always get sad at the end of everything. Yep. And this has been quite a valuable experience, mm-hmm. I think. And an emotional journey for you. Yes. Aww. Hopefully for both of us. Uh-huh. It has been. <laughs> but I enjoyed watching your enthusiasm. emotions. Yeah, your enthusiasm, your emotions. Okay, so this is going to be our talk on books 11 and 12. Humanity's future, future of, in particular, Adam through Abraham, Moses. Okay, so the last book, book 10, we discussed last week, God had judged Adam and Eve, and they're pretty much left brokenhearted and contrite. Right. right. At the end, they break mm-hmm. down, confess their faults, and throw themselves on God's mercy. Right. And we left them at the end of book 10, they were praying. Right. Now in book 11, God hears Adam and Eve's prayers. Right. And the son intercedes. Now we know that Adam and Eve are going to have to leave the garden, but God sends Michael to lead them out. Right. And Michael will, in book 11, he begins to show Adam a vision of what will happen in the future. Right. So the actual, it actually starts out Uh with this. Thus they in lowliest plight, repentant, stood. And we've been making the point that there is a difference between the fall of Satan and the fall of man. Because as we saw the very first book, Mm -hmm. Evil Unrepentant is what we called it in The Christian Atheist. I remember, yep. I think so. Mm -hmm. And uh, so one of the fundamental differences is that man repents, Right. right? And then it says, Prevenient grace descending had removed the stony from their hearts and made new flesh regenerate grow instead. Right. And as I said to you on our walk tonight, This raises that question Mm -hmm. of the nature of faith versus what we call fundamental faith. Adam and Eve believed in God. Certainly, there was no problem there. They had walked with him and talked with him in the garden. So it's not just a matter of belief. But I I even said to you, I'm not sure how to process the nature of the belief. It's like a mystery. Well, it kind of reminds me of the sheep and the goats when Jesus divides the sheep and the goats. And he says to the goats, you did all of these things, but you never knew me. And he says to the sheep, you did all the same things, but you did know me. Right. That Actually, he says that in book 12, uh-huh. excuse me, book 11, line 22. See, Father, what first fruits on earth are sprung from thy implanted grace in man. So he's prefiguring exactly that. Uh-huh. The fruits of the spirit, the fruits of the regenerate heart are the same in all times. Yeah. Um, not just after Christ, but before Christ as well. By their fruits, you will know them. But it's not just the fruits, isn't it? You never knew me. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. He says to them, they said, we did all of these things. We did the fruit. And he said, but I never knew you. Right. Jesus says that yeah. at the end when yeah. he's judging. Yes. Yeah. yeah. You say you do all, did all these wonderful things in my name, but right. I never knew you. Right. So you did the fruit, right. but I never knew you. Right. And knowing is the difference. Yes. That fundamental relationship that we talked about last week, having a relationship with God, with Christ. And we don't really, I I don't really understand the distinction there. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't quite know how to process all of that. But relating to that a little farther down in that introductory portion, Jesus says to the father that to better life shall yield him, where with me, all my redeemed may dwell in joy and bliss made one with me as I with thee am one. And there's that superlative relation Mm -hmm. that we talked about last week, that God is relation, and that when we fail to relate properly, we fall out of the proper relation with God. And that's the very nature of sin itself, missing the mark. Knowing God. Right. And And knowing God, yes. And him knowing you. Right. And exactly, again, how that plays out, I, mm-hmm. I guess because I guess I'm puzzled right now about that because one of our critics most recently has taken that line with me. What mm-hmm. exactly is faith in relation to God and how much faith does one have to have right. in order to have saving <clears throat> faith? Right. And I said essentially to him, I don't have an answer for that. Mm-hmm. That's the mystery of God. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And uh, I would say he asked it in terms of quantity, and he mm-hmm. said he said 100 percent, 50 percent, yeah, faith the size of a mustard seed. And I said, well, mustard seed size faith is 
way above what I managed to generate. Right. And, <laughs> and that's because and, he wants science. He wants an answer scientifically. Right. Rather than, you know, God mm -hmm. making the change in our hearts, as it says there in the very first part of this book 11, regenerate. Mm -hmm. God regenerates the heart right. and changes things. And it's all in God. It's not on us. Right. Okay, and then just a few more points before we go where you want to take us. Uh -huh. I thought it was interesting that in the discussion between the father and the son, the father says to the son, but no longer in that paradise to dwell. The law I gave to nature, him forbids. Mm -hmm. And so it's not like God is throwing man out of the garden. No. It is the natural law that God created creation with. Right. It is God's very nature right. that forbids it. Man's decision to sin is what got him thrown out of the garden. Exactly. And then immediately after that, God says this, that fondly lost, this other served but to eternize woe. And what he means by that there is there were two trees growing beside each other the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and the tree of life. Mm -hmm. And if they are to now eat of the tree of life, they would eternize, he says here, their woe. Right. They right, would make right, themselves right, right. eternal Eternally. in the agony of, of sin. sin. Right. And so it was mercy that God cuts off the right. tree of life. And God says, till I provided death. So death becomes his final remedy. Right. And so we always tend to think of all of these things as God punishing. Right. But it's actually, those things are done by God as a mercy to us right. so that we don't bear the full consequence of all of the evil that we brought on ourselves. And later, Jesus comes and he says, go ahead and eat of the tree of life. I am the tree of life. Go ahead That's and eat right. of it. That's right. That's right. Yes. Yeah. So he does so, allow us to eat of the tree of life, but in its time, in its right. season. Yeah. When the fullness of time comes. Right. And others too, before that, ate, were able to eat of the tree of life through faith in mm -hmm. anticipation, just as Adam and Eve are, of the seed that would come. Right. As it Hebrews to, 11 makes very clear. It has to be in the proper time. Right. Just like with anything, when you deal with your children, it has to be in the proper time or else everything gets chaotic. Right. And so we've been talking about this Felix culpa, the idea of the happy sin. And I think Milton makes very clear that he does not want to resolve that question. And I think as we read through it, we get both cases, both for it and against it. And I think that that is not a contradiction, but a paradox, because God does, in fact, use everything to bring about good. Mm -hmm. But we'll never know whether or not it would have been better good one way or the other. Right. We just know that God takes everything in stride. Mm -hmm. He knows what's coming. He deals with what is, not with what could have been. Right. And makes good of it. And people say, you didn't give me a chance. If I was back then, I might not have eaten of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So why is sin passed on me? And then God says, okay, now you can eat of the tree of life, which is Jesus. And you're saying you don't want to eat and you of don't the want tree. It. Right. And there's that. Now he's that saying, go ahead and eat of the tree. And now you're not doing it. Right. And, and there's that fundamental choice. That chance. Right. Yeah. And God gives us the choice. Mm -hmm. We can choose to be free in him or we can choose the slavery of sin. Right. And it is astounding how often man chooses. Right. And I so, put myself in that category. Right. The slavery of sin rather than the freedom of God. And I'll pick up here. To know both good and evil, God says, since his taste of that defended fruit. So man in his sin, in fact, got the knowledge of good and evil. But let him boast his knowledge of good lost and evil got. Right. And we've seen this about three times mm -hmm. now in the course of Paradise Lost, that particular notion. And you... That's what the Christian atheist was this week. And that's People what we, got. right, we picked up on that theme again mm -hmm. this week in the Christian atheist on Monday. On Monday, yep. And then says, God says this, happier had it sufficed him to have known good by itself and evil not at all. Mm -hmm. Now that seems to be making the case against Felix Culpa. Right. But I don't know that it's decisive because I, as I said, Milton seems to make both cases for and against. And I don't look at that as a contradiction, but as a paradox, mm -hmm. because it is not a contradiction if God takes whatever happens and makes it work right. to the best. Right. And Milton was trying to work it out in his own mind. Right. I don't think Milton even had an answer right. for himself on it. 
Okay, so now Adam and Eve finish their prayers, and Adam encourages Eve, and Eve promises to never leave Adam's side again, and then Michael arrives. Right, and right before that, mm-hmm. Adam says to Eve... Right before Michael arrives? Right, exactly. Okay, go ahead. Eve, easily may faith admit, and this is... Milton does not often talk about faith in Paradise mm-hmm. Lost, but he uses the word here. Eve, easily may faith admit that all the good which we enjoy from heaven descends. And if you remember from the Christian atheists, we talk about that fundamental faith mm-hmm. in the goodness of God, in the goodness of the universe, in the goodness that he's given around us, that all of this was designed good by God, right. which God himself recognized in creation when he looked around and said, all that this uh, that I've created is good. That faith is fundamental, and it's something that they walked away from in the temptation, because that's one of the things that the tempter actually threatened them with. Yea, hath God said, mm-hmm. is it really true that you will die? Is it really true that this knowledge of good and evil is a bad thing? Don't you think that would expand things for you? Mm -hmm. And so he's fundamentally questioning there the goodness of God, the goodness of the world, the goodness of creation. And it now returns to Adam and Eve. As Adam says right here, all of this good, as James said, comes down to us from above. All of the goodness that we enjoy, everything is God's goodness. Would you say Milton was on the verge of the like a change in science when science was about to explode? Oh, for sure. Yeah, that's interesting because he wrote Paradise Lost at the same time that science was about to explode. And the people at that time had that same temptation that Satan had with Eve. Exactly. Like God's he's yeah. holding back all this knowledge from you or you know, you can know more. I wonder if he struggled with all of this new knowledge oh, coming I- at him. I mean, we're used to things changing quickly for us because we, you know, we were born into it. But at their time, things were progressing more, I think, slower than it is now, right? I have not thought at that level about this, but I think yeah. you're exactly right. It was about? almost a parallel time mm-hmm. to the temptation right. of, of Adam and Eve. And they because had the, there was this new yeah, way of thinking yeah. and knowledge and coming in. The Christians at that time, they were thinking to themselves, Whoa, what you know, what yeah. should I be thinking about all of this? Right. And there's mm-hmm. a temptation, a direct temptation to walk away from God and all mm-hmm. of that and start trusting in knowledge that is you know, what right. Milton says forbidden. Right. But forbidden in the sense of this is knowledge that will lead you astray. Mm-hmm. And it was right at the same time he writes Paradise Lost. Yeah. That's pretty neat. I mean I mean that you just hit on something there that I think almost tells me why God brought us to this moment dealing mm-hmm. with this. Mm-hmm. Because this is, I think that's exactly right. Milton found himself at the beginning of the scientific process. Mm-hmm. And he, I, I, I shouldn't say even he, mm-hmm. I think God had it planned that this was almost like a new temptation. Right. And you see where it's led us. Yeah, where it's led us now. And, and this, that's why we say it's so relevant to today's world. Right, and this new AI stuff mm-hmm. that's coming about. And the, um, and not just that, but in the medical world with changing people's sexes. And, yes. You know. You yeah, know, just, we're turning scary. from reality, yeah. God's law, mm-hmm. to this imagined world of human rationality, recreating the world in our own image or in the image of evil. And I can't help but see it that starkly. Right. And you you see it in in a lot of people saying, you know, that... Oh, yeah, that ye shall be as gods. So you see it in in their... And almost like you can kind of see it in their attitudes. It is definitely that. That is the appeal. To be as God. Yeah, you shall be as gods. You can choose Mm -hmm. to... Create reality in your own image. You can decide in the face of all the facts that you are a woman instead of a man, or a man instead of a woman, or what, um, a furry instead of a human being. It's like this insanity that has attacked us and has seemed to have come out of the blue. Right. At the same time as the AI, yeah. which is an imaginary world, right? because you don't know what's real with right. AI. Right. It's the literal ability to recreate the world around yeah. us yeah. in in contrast to, in mm-hmm. contradiction to the mm-hmm. natural world, the scientific world. The ideal of science is that we conform ourselves 
to the rule of the world around us. Right. And whether you think of that as a Christian or as a non-Christian, there are absolute realities to which we should conform ourselves. Right. And that is what is being fundamentally undermined. And I think you're right. I yeah. think that this is a direct parallel. With what Milton was experiencing. With what Milton was experiencing. I mean, when, when we think of what Milton experienced, it's kind of elementary because we learned the things that he was finding out. We were we kind of learned in elementary school, right? Because it was the beginning of science, just a huge progress in science. A science really based on the yeah. fundamental presuppositions of the Christian worldview. Yeah. So he's probably at the same point then as we are now, but we're on the next phase where we're heading into the AI and the, this crazy weird world. And he probably felt the same way back then, I'm guessing. Yeah, I would he's imagine. entering a crazy weird well, world. <laughs> if you remember back in book one of Paradise yeah. Lost, yeah. he said that his goal in writing this was to justify the ways of God to man. Right. And he must have had a reason for that. Right. And I think it may very well be exactly what you said. Mm -hmm. He's facing this scientific revolution in knowledge, and he felt the need to reestablish God's position yeah. in all of that. Right. And now we're in another phase. And right. I don't know, this seems to me like a bit of a different <laughs> almost yeah. a radically well, different he or he needed, escalation of the problem. He needed to say, in the beginning, God, maybe you and I need to write a Paradise Lost in the beginning, God, and remind everybody, huh? Well, that's interesting because we were just talking about yeah. the possibility of some fiction yeah. between us just yesterday. Okay. So, so back, where were we? <laughs> back to the poem. Right before Michael comes down, Eve is talking about the fact to Adam that she was the one who brought death on all. And she says, I am graced as the source of life because of the promise that she will bring forth this, the promised seed, mm -hmm. Jesus. But she makes this pledge to Adam that I find very dear. I never from thy side henceforth to stray, where'er our day's work lies, though now enjoined laborious till day droop. While here we dwell, what can be toilsome in these pleasant walks? Here let us live, though in fallen state, content. And that, <laughs> those mm -hmm. words, I know it's Eve speaking to Adam here, but when I came back to Christ mm -hmm. and I thought about like finding other jobs and all the <laughs> rest of that, and you said to me, no, you're done with those things. Now well, we're going we're to- we're talking about- you were doing like massive amount of jobs. <laughs> yeah. I think I had thought about mm -hmm. going out and trying to get teaching jobs and mm -hmm. all the rest. And you said, no, you're, you're done with that. We, we need to work together here mm -hmm. on out. And that is exactly right. And it's, and it's trust the, God and trust God. And the only two goals that I have in life now mm -hmm. are those to spend the rest of my life, each and every moment that I can with you, in serving, serving God. God. That's right. it. I don't care about anything else. Mm -hmm. And so Eve's words here are very dear to me. Mm -hmm. I love those words. I think of, I know this is a totally different story. This is Jane Eyre. But I think of Mr. Rochester saying, I've seen the world and it's overrated. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And, and that's how I feel that way too. Age, at this age, we've seen the world and yes. it is overrated. Yep. It is all overrated. And all I care about, I mean, we did say the one thing we would like to do if we get the chance right. is to go to Israel yeah, together. Yeah, that would be good. And see like the places that the Lord mm -hmm. walked and taught. And I was there once and I just so want for you to see that yeah. because it's very special. Right. But other than that, no goals and in to this see life. your excitement and enthusiasm in Israel. That would be <laughs> fun. <laughs> that would be fun for me. <laughs> okay, so go ahead. Okay, so Michael arrives, as I said, and he, they find out they have to leave paradise. And also that they won't be able to speak to God again on that personal level where God walks in the garden and, yes. and meets with them. And that's the tragedy, mm -hmm. I think, the great tragedy that Milton talked about. Yeah, yeah. So Adam is led to a hill to be shown the future, and Eve is put into an enchanted sleep. Okay, and then at this point, Michael starts to tell Adam the future, everything that's going to happen up until pretty much Milton's time, right? Right. From if, Cain and Abel. If mm -hmm. I can, mm -hmm. <laughs> sorry, to butt in again. 
there was a point at which Michael actually interacted with Eve. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. And Eve sort of lamented that she was going to be losing paradise. And she says, these flowers, which I bred up with tender hand. And so the mixing of our labor with the natural world, and I think especially with her hand there, that notion of the hand, Mm -hmm. once again, Eve found that precious. And I think all of us do. The things that we mix our labor with, we tend to identify ourselves with. But Michael sort of rebuked her and said this, whom thus the angel interrupted mild, lament not, Eve, but patiently resign what justly thou hast lost. In other words, you've you've earned this loss. Mm -hmm. You've chosen poorly, both you and Adam. Nor set thy heart thus over fond on that which is not thine. Right. Right. And so again, this is that notion of proper relation. The world is God's. Mm-hmm. All of the world is God's. Yeah, and, he, and even if you've mixed your labor with it, that belongs to God. Right. Thy going is not lonely. With thee goes thy husband, whom to follow thou art bound. Where he abides, think there thy native soil. And I look at your face now, and you're smiling. Well, I'm smiling not because what you're thinking. I'm thinking about telling people in today's world, telling a, a woman yeah, that, that, you know. If you just stay with your husband, <laughs> everything will be, be well. <laughs> I'm thinking about that. Yeah. And then in contrast to what I feel about you. Right. Mm-hmm, but that will be well if I stay with you. But, yeah, and that's I'm the difference. You. We have talked about the sundering of the natural relation. Mm-hmm, exactly. And that's part of the problem. Mm-hmm. It's like, that's not just one way. Mm-hmm. Michael says it to Eve, but there is no place in this world and no group of people, no circumstance mm-hmm. that without you would be valuable right, to me. Right, right. And I think. And maybe that's wisdom gained with age and experience. Mm-hmm. Or that most people have not gotten. It's something that's been robbed. Yeah, seems and systematically like undermined, right. I think. It seems like it's been attacked. and The yeah. long march through the institutions. Yeah, yeah. One of the fundamental things that the Marxists sought to undermine was mm-hmm. the marital relationship. Right. And when you read dystopian novels like yes like brave new world you know all of that stuff uh, and, and then even 1984, 1984 yeah, yeah it's always an attack on the marital relationship the marital relationship yeah and somehow those people got it that that's the basis of everything yes okay so at this point michael talks about disease natural disaster war old age hospitals I and mean, adam wonders why all people don't just kill themselves and michael does say that if we live temperately we might be able to avoid some of these effects of sin and then adam sees people who have forgotten god and then he thinks they're happy because they're living enjoyable lives but then michael tells him that they have forgotten god and they're living in lust michael shows adam death and destruction of war because of their lustful living and then he shows about noah and the flood and and then, I mean, it gets to the point where Adam eventually wishes he'd never seen any of it. You know, it depresses him. Right. Because Deeply he, depressing. Yeah, because he realizes this is all his own fault. So um, as book, that's the end of book 11. And then as book 12 opens, Michael can see that Adam has been overwhelmed by everything. So he ends up telling Adam the rest of Adam's own story, where right. Adam and then Abraham and, and all the way through. All right, so what else would you like to say about Book 11? Um, So I think you did a nice job covering what happens, because there's an awful lot in 11 that I just would say, let's skip over. It's just a history lesson, yeah. Most of the people who are familiar with the Christian history in the world Uh will know what's going on and understand it. It's not a difficult chapter to understand, but there are a few highlights that I would love to hit, because when... Michael tells Adam and Eve that they are about to lose paradise. Mm -hmm. We saw Eve's response just a few moments ago. But Adam says this, This most afflicts me, that departing hence, as from his face I shall be hid, deprived his blessed countenance. I will lose that direct connection with God. Mm -hmm. 
he says. And I think that is the great tragedy. Yeah, it is. It is the loss of relation, mm -hmm. that fundamental immediate relation with God, that man lost with sin. And as you said um, in book 10, the Christian atheist, evil got relations re lost. Relations fractured, fractured, yes, exactly right. Here I could frequent with worship, place by place, where he vouchsafed divine presence. It's like Adam says, all over Eden, I look and I see these places where I met with God, and I would memorialize those places, because that was the highlight of my life. In yonder nether world, where shall I seek his bright appearances or footstep trace? Right? The feet of God walking in the garden mm -hmm. and all of that beauty. He says, I'm losing that now. Right. For though I fled him angry, yet recalled to life. <laughs> and as I said, that is actually a phrase that Charles Dickens picked up, mm -hmm. probably from right here. Right. And used that in A Tale of Two Cities. Dickens was influenced by Milton. By Milton, mm. for sure. Go ahead. So he says, For though I fled him angry, yet recalled to life, prolonged and promised race, I now gladly behold, though but his utmost skirts of glory, and far off his steps adore. So the relation now has become distanced. Mm -hmm. As we said, God's presence was good lost. Mm -hmm. God's absence is evil got. Right. And I can't help but recall here what David Smalley said to me when I talked about the great arguments against God's existence. And he said, well, for me, the great argument is God's absence. Yeah. Right? You remember yeah. when he said yeah, that? Yeah, I remember that. He was mm -hmm. like, I can't okay. see him here mm -hmm. anywhere. And that is the tragedy. Right. And of course, the problem is. And if you listen to David Smalley, you could tell he longed for it. I think it. he longed for it. He yeah. does. You could hear it in his voice. You, he was saying it to you, but it was like he was saying it to God. Where are you? Yep. Where and are I, you, God? Yeah. And why can't I see you? And then Michael says this mm -hmm. surmise not then his presence to these narrow bounds confined of paradise or Eden. That is, God is everywhere present. Mm -hmm. Doubt not, but in valley and in plain, God is as here, and will be found alike present, and of his presence many a sign still following thee, still compassing thee round with goodness and paternal love, his face express, and of his steps the track divine. Mm -hmm. So, as we've tried to indicate throughout the Christian atheists, all of these things point to God. Mm -hmm. But we have to be willing to follow where they lead. Right. And that is the tragedy. When I think of our conversation with David Smalley mm -hmm. and the ache that I saw yeah. in him, I just wish he could let go of those blinders mm -hmm. that he is holding on to, that he refuses to <laughs> look beyond those blinders to see all of creation pointing to God. <laughs> that's, that's funny because that's what I said about you <laughs> when I used to talk to you before you were, yes. when I text with you before you were, I remember you saying before that. you came back. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I would say the exact same words. Okay. So before we move on, there's another point I would like to make a little farther on in the book. Adam book says, yeah, of book 11, Adam says this, but still I see the tenor of man's woe holds on the same from woman to begin. So he's seeing the story that Michael's laying out before him, and he goes back to his old saw mm -hmm. that woman has caused all fault. of these problems for man. Right. And I love what? Michael's response. Mm -hmm. And it's not kind, it's not like soft. Mm -hmm. Michael comes back. And strikes him like with a sword and says this. Actually, I'm going to actually read it in context because if I have the whole thing together, you feel the sharpness of Michael's response mm -hmm. much clearer. Adam says, but still I see the tenor of man's woe holds on the same. From woman to begin, Michael's response. From man's effeminate slackness it begins, <laughs> said the angel. Who should better hold his place by wisdom and superior gifts received? Michael says, 
Oh, is man. that a rebuke? <laughs> yeah. Be a man. Stand up and be a man. Adam. Yeah. Stop blaming others for your weakness. And I love that. Yeah. Yeah. And as much as I love it, I know that I have all of Adam's weakness exactly yeah. like that. You've fallen short, right? Oh, my you goodness. I have failed to be a man so many times. And that's what God calls us to. It's the ideal. And it's something we never achieve, yep. but we should be aware that we don't achieve it and strive for it because that's what we're called for. Quit blaming others and quit whining men about women. Stand up and be a man. And this last bit from book 11, I think is important because both you and I have been struggling with this issue mm -hmm. currently. Yep. Michael says to Adam, these things I've said to you to teach thee that God attributes to place no sanctity. Mm -hmm. If none be thither brought by men who there frequent or therein dwell, there is no sacred place in itself mm -hmm. unless man recognizes God's presence there, right. because that is where the sacred exists. Mm -hmm. God said to Moses, the place where you stand is sacred ground. ground. Take off your sandals. Mm -hmm. But what made it sacred? The God. presence of God right. and man recognizing that presence. Be careful, churches. Mm -hmm. It is not the church that is sacred, not your gathering, not your building. It is the presence of God right. in the people of God. Right. And I think we get that wrong by overemphasis in the evangelical world quite frequently. Right. And it scares me. Right. So that's the last thing I have to say about Book 11. About Book 11. Yep. And so Sorry now we go into Book 12. <laughs> and as I said, Book 12 opens with Michael realizing that Adam is overwhelmed. So he tells Adam the rest of his. Adam's own story. Right. He actually opens with these words. Uh -huh. Here the archangel Michael paused betwixt the world destroyed, that is, <laughs> yeah. the, the flood, yeah, and the world restored. Yeah. And I can't help but see there the wood between the worlds, mm -hmm. which has played such an important role in the Christian atheist. That's right. Mm -hmm. So Michael tells him how the earth will be repopulated after the flood, but it slowly returns to evil, and then eventually Nimrod and the power of Babel, and then he explains tyranny, and then he talks about Abraham, the Israelites in Egypt, Moses and Aaron, the Israelites as a nation, Joshua, whose name is the same as Jesus' name, David, Solomon, and then on to the Messiah, and then after Jesus, and then Judgment Day. That's what book 12 basically goes through. Right. And it ends, of course, with Adam and Eve leaving paradise. Adam. And we'll cover that. Yeah. Uh, is, but of course, I have points I was that say, I'd love to bring I what would you like to, to bring out in book 12? Early in book 12, Michael is talking to Adam. Mm -hmm. And he's talking about one individual in particular, affecting to subdue rational liberty. Yet no withal, Michael says to Adam. Since thy original lapse, that is, from original sin, that originary sin that brought mankind the separation from God that we talked about last week, mm -hmm. since that true liberty is lost, which always with right reason dwells, twinned, and from her hath no individual being. Mm -hmm. That is, once we sinned, we lost true liberty. Right. and in doing so, lost true rationality as well. That doesn't mean our rationality has fallen completely into a lapse. We are still rational creatures. Right. But our rationality apart from God has become troubled. Mm -hmm. And this is what he says, upstart passions catch the government, that is, the control of the human being, mm -hmm. from reason, and to servitude reduce man till then free. Therefore, since he permits within himself unworthy powers to reign over free reason, God, in judgment just, subjects him from without to violent lords. And you talked about tyranny. Right, he discusses right. tyranny, yep. Who oft as undeservedly enthrall his outward freedom. Tyranny must be, though to the tyrant thereby no excuse. 
Yet sometimes nations will decline so low from virtue, which is reason. And note that. That's important. Aristotle and the Greeks said the same thing. Reason is virtue. Virtue is reason. It's kind of like the superlative of gods that we talked about before. Yet sometimes nations will decline so low from virtue, which is reason, that no wrong but justice and some fatal curse annexed deprives them of their outward liberty, their inward lost. Thus will this latter, that is, this latter world, remember we talked about the woods between the yep. worlds, this latter world, as the former world, still tend from bad to worse. And that's the basic logic of the fallen humanity. And why, over and over again in history, the cycle repeated mm -hmm. that things would get a little better and then they would get very bad for long right. periods until Christianity. Mm -hmm. And the Christian Western world made a radical departure, brought us the scientific cool. worldview, and created what is as close as humankind has ever had to a heaven on earth, mm -hmm. which we are in the process of unraveling now because we've turned from God, right. from the fundamental faith, from Christianity. To that circle with the Greeks where yes. it was like democracy. And right. Then, that Plato very closely documented. Oligarchy, was it? And then aristocracy and then tyranny and then... It's I actually what the order was. Yeah, the order was first aristocracy, ruled by the best. Mm -hmm. Rule by the honor loving, and then it sort of declined from there to rule by the wealthy, mm -hmm. oligarchy, and then democracy. Okay. And then democracy inevitably, Plato says, overturns into tyranny. Right. Okay. So we're um, back to that point we're, as we're rejecting the Christian foundations. And in doing that, we're actually doing that cycle. Right. Over we're again. going back to the same old cycle. Right. And we have in the Western world made a decision to destroy ourselves. The suicide mm -hmm. of the West, as I forget who the author was who wrote that. Douglas Murray? We read the original one. It was back in the 50s by the socialist. I forget who did. Um, yeah, I know what you're saying. It was James Burnham, Suicide of the West, an essay on the meaning and destiny of liberalism, published in 1964. Oh, okay. So we've lost original freedom. Mm -hmm. And in doing so, we have enslaved ourselves, which is exactly what Satan did. So we're in the process of replaying the same old scenario again. Same lie, different. <laughs> same lies, a different time period. Right. Adam actually says this to Michael. Uh -huh. Michael re having revealed to him interesting things about the coming of the Savior. He says, but now I see his day in whom all nations shall be blessed, favor unmerited by me, who sought forbidden knowledge by forbidden means. So again, seeking knowledge has never been condemned by God, but seeking forbidden knowledge by forbidden means. The means matter by which we seek knowledge. All right, that's all I want to say on that point. And then we move forward. So a little farther on, uh -huh. Michael says to Adam, so shall the world go on, to good malignant, mm -hmm. to bad men benign. benign. And there's that cycle over and over yeah. again, right? The good perishes, and the bad rises to the fore and rewards ongoing the bad. And that's the world that we are living in today, this Thank woke you. world. And we Christians, we on the right, we conservatives are like astounded by this, but there's no reason to be astounded by it. It is the natural order of things mm -hmm. without Christ. That's right. And we've chosen from back in the 19th century to slowly but surely throw away transcendence mm -hmm. in this world. And we're just beginning to reap the consequences right. now quickly because, you know, how do you go? How right. do you go poor? Slowly and then suddenly. Mm -hmm. It's like that's how it happens. Right. That's from the sun also rises. Ernest Hemingway? Yeah, but Ernest Hemingway, yes, by Ernest Hemingway. Okay, so actually, again, picking up on that same issue of seeking knowledge, towards the end of this, we, we're now coming towards the end of book 12. Right. So you can relax. I'm almost done. Okay. Adam says this, greatly instructed, I shall hence depart. That is, after having talked with Michael, greatly in peace of thought, 
and have my fill of knowledge what this vessel can contain right there's that notion of being able to gather the knowledge mm-hmm. that we need to live effectively on earth which is the adventure that god right. calls us to as human right. beings god never condemns our knowledge or search for knowledge mm-hmm. unless it is illicit and the the means by which we right. choose it to do it are wrong beyond the boundaries that put in place beyond which was my folly adam says to aspire henceforth i learned that to obey is best And as you said, when we talked about this, this is like right out of Ecclesiastes. And love with fear, the only God, to walk as in his presence, ever to observe his providence, and on him soul depend, merciful over all his works, with good still overcoming evil, and by small accomplishing great things, by things deemed weak, subverting worldly strong and worldly wise by simply meek that suffering for truth's sake is fortitude to highest victory and to the faithful death the gate of life taught this by his example whom i now acknowledge my redeemer ever blessed Mm -hmm. So basically, what is the conclusion of the whole matter? Yes. Fear God and keep his commandments. This is the whole duty of man. Right. And I could not help but think at that point Mm -hmm. of the passage in Job where he says, the Redeemer liveth and he shall stand the last day upon the earth. And though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh. Yet in my flesh I shall see God. God. And that is that fundamental faith that underlies everything in the goodness of Mm -hmm. God and the trust in him. Even in the face of all of the contrary evidence of evil in the world, we trust in him and in that rest. Well, John 6.68, Peter says, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. There's no place else to go. You know, and you quoted that so Mm -hmm. many times in our relationship. And it's exactly right. And that's where I keep coming down to. Every time I fall into doubts, it's like, where else do I go? Here's the answer. It's the only answer that in all of my, how old am I now? 56? (laughs) You're 56 and a half. 56 and a half, going on 57. In all of the years that I've been on this earth, the only answer that makes sense, that brings it all together in a reasonable fashion is that one. Mm Mm-hmm. I turn to Jesus. So Michael says to Adam, only add deeds to thy knowledge answerable. Add faith, add virtue, patience, temperance. Add love by name to come called charity, the soul of all the rest. Then wilt thou not be loath to leave this paradise, but shalt possess a paradise within thee. Mm happier far. Right. Which we talked about today in contrast to Satan. Remember we talked about it on the hell. You said about how Satan oh, yes. says he makes a hell of heaven, heaven of hell. That is the theme with which I would like to close mm-hmm. Paradise Lost. Because as you just said, we saw Satan make the point, I think it's in book two, it might be in book one, that the mind is its own place that can make of heaven a hell or of hell, a heaven. Mm -hmm. But the mind is not its own place. It is God's place. And if we human beings want to live in joy and happiness and love, there is only one mind in which to dwell. And it is not ours. It is the mind of Christ. And that is where we seek and find happiness and contentment and reality and truth. So at this point in book 12, as you said, Adam is comforted that peace and reconciliation eventually awaits the earth. Eve is awakened, and she had actually been comforted in her dreams because of the Messiah that was going to come from her. Yes. And then the sad part, the part that makes you want to tear up. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) They leave paradise and walk hand in hand into this new world. Yes. This new adventure, this new journey. Right. So I'll quickly narrate mm-hmm. it down through that go ahead michael try says not to cry <laughs> <laughs> that ye may live this is michael speaking to adam that ye may live which will be many days both in one faith unanimous though sad 
with cause for evils past. This is not an easy world to live in. The veil of tears through which we walk in this world is very real. The pains are real. The evils are real. And we all experience them. But if we together in one faith, unanimous though sad, yet much more cheered with meditation on the happy end. That's the fundamental faith with which we must move forward. God is good, and we must trust in that good. Eve said, Whence thou returnest, and whither wentest, I know, for God is also in sleep. What's that passage where, if we go to the deeps, God, you are there? If I go to the heavens, there too? Mm-hmm, I like, can't right. get away from him. Is that Psalm 139? Okay, that uh, I'll have to trust you on that. Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, but God is so. everywhere we go. God is there. Mm-hmm. And that is, should, should be a comfort. Eve then says, but now lead on. In me is no delay. With thee to go, and okay, here's where I start to threaten tears. <laughs> With thee to go is to stay here. That is, you are my Eden, right. Adam. Wherever I am. Without thee here. Here to stay is to go hence unwilling. Thou to me art all things under heaven, all places thou, who for my willful crime art banished hence. And I feel that, those words, I know it's Eve saying it to Adam, Mm -hmm. but I feel that with you every day. It's like I have screwed so many things up in my life and you have to deal with so many of the consequences of that. And vice versa. And you say vice Mm -hmm. versa. I know. I don't really ever think that, but okay. Mm -hmm. That's what I say. It also reminds me of Ruth, right? Mm -hmm. Saying, your God will be my God. Where you go, I will go. And so Michael leads them, and this is a quick ending. Mm -hmm. It is. Which is is fitting. It is. Michael leads them down the hill from Eden. And then the text says, then disappeared. Mm Mm-hmm. And there's that tragedy of the immediate presence of the divine in our lives suddenly vanishing. That was their last connection. Right, that immediate connection. Mm -hmm. Not that there aren't other Theophanies and Christophanies in the Bible, Mm -hmm. but that was that last immediate connection Mm -hmm. with the divine that man experienced. And again, I can't help but think of David Smalley and others say, okay, where is God? Mm -hmm. So down they walked. The world was all before them. These are the last four lines of Paradise Lost. Where to choose their place of rest and providence their guide. God did not abandon them. He is still leading. Mm -hmm. And we see that in our Mm -hmm. lives. Definitely, I do. They, hand in hand, with wandering steps and slow, through Eden took their solitary way. End. That's it. And so Paradise Lost ends with Adam and Eve hand in hand. hand. And so Paradise doesn't end because the mind is its own place and can make a heaven of hell. And I think that is what we're called to. And I think... And unfortunately, don't forget the other part, a hell of 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 heaven. heaven. But that is Satan's part. Which one are you going to choose? Which will you choose? Right. That is the case. And C.S. Lewis has a famous passage in The Great Divorce mm-hmm. where, where George MacDonald, his teacher, says to him that the blessed ultimately will come to understand that they always lived in paradise. Mm-hmm. Right. And those who live in hell will understand that they have always resided in hell. Mm-hmm. And there is that mind, which is its own place. So it's either its own place and hellish, or it's God's place, and it's Mm -hmm. beautiful Mm -hmm. and lovely and perfect. And good. And good. And relationship restored. Right. Paradise regained. And that, I think, is the ultimate message of Paradise Lost. Choose paradise. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. So is that all you have to say? Believe it or not, I think I'm done. (laughs) It's been a long haul. <laughs> Not a bad haul, but mm-hmm. a long haul. <laughs> okay, so if you haven't started re- reading Paradise Lost for yourself, you can listen to John read it um, while you're on your way to work or while you're walking your dog or whatever you like to do and listen to podcasts. Maybe you should take a walk with your wife. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take a walk with your wife. Listen to it with your wife or your husband. 
Um, the links are in the description where you can listen to it on the Simple Gifts podcast without commentary. If you do listen to it on YouTube, please subscribe. It's better probably to listen to it on YouTube anyway because it's in a playlist in order. Anyway, if you listen to it on YouTube, be sure to subscribe. We would appreciate that. Also, if you would like to hear John discuss book 11 through 12 this past Monday, we'll have the link in the description on that too. So no matter where you're listening, leave a comment, send us a message. John tries to always reply to comments and messages as he's able. And if you have the means to support us, use the link in the description to buy us a cup of coffee. And we hope you have a wonderful week as always. Thank you so much for listening to us and taking time out of your life to listen. We appreciate you all. And thank you, my love. This has been an amazing journey through Paradise Lost with you. It has been. We've learned a lot. And I haven't cried at all during this one, but I'm pretty close now because (laughs) I have enjoyed reading Paradise Lost with you Mm -hmm. and discussing it at a level that I can hardly even begin to express. So I'm going to give you a kiss on here. And hopefully it makes lots of noise. <laughs> All right. You <laughs> because are I love you more than I love life itself. And I thank you for being my paradise oh, regained. John, I love you. <laughs> I am a Christian with the searching and skeptical mind of an atheist. I don't want to believe anything that isn't true. I know both sides of the looking glass and I know them with open eyes. I choose Christ's side. I invite you to join me from wherever you stand before the looking glass. That's this week's episode. Thanks for listening. And remember, you can have your religious cake and eat it too. You can have reason, respect for science, a 21st century worldview, and be a Christian.